Twale Rockstars Twale. This is Kilechi Uzodima Pitalis Onyense, aka KK Onyense, aka Kuvo. Okay, so I somehow had to find a way to come back live to finish this particular topic. The devil is a liar. Okay, we will discuss and we will discuss and finish. All right. So, um, as we all know, the topic we're talking about is how values and beliefs can actually make or break your marriage. Now, I guess I will just have to start again because this is an entirely new video. Okay. I have to delete the first one because at some point there's a bit of interruption network and all of that kind of stuff. So I needed to, to pull it down. But going straight to the point, I know God has taken control. He said to them, we are back live, Abby. And so now let's keep rocking. Okay. So now going on on this particular topic, talking about how values and beliefs can actually make or break our marriage. You see, it comes down on two things. If you and your spouse are able to work together, your values and beliefs can actually make your marriage. But where you and your spouse are not able to come together when it concerns your values and beliefs, you're going to have problems. There are also other ways these values and beliefs can also affect your marriage positively or negatively. Like I initially talked about values and beliefs like a, like a week ago, right? I said values are like those principles, those standards, those ideals that are important to you. They make you, do you understand, is who you are, okay? It's just, for example, like you may be one who just say, you know, I like people being honest to me and I also like being honest to people. Do you understand? You may choose to be that one person who of loyalty. Maybe you may choose to be that one person who just, you know, just believe in doing good, who just loves being kind. All these things are values you probably hold strongly. Okay? But if you are someone in marriage with those strong values and your spouse has a different view of those values, of course, you're going to be having conflicts, right? When it also comes to beliefs, for what you believe in and your spouse does not believe in the same thing, you're also going to have the same problem. When we talk about beliefs, like I, I also mentioned in the last video when we started talking about these values and beliefs, we said beliefs are like those convictions, those things that you, you have, you, 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 you strongly believe in them that they are true, or false, even though there are no evidence to it. For example, you believe in God. Okay. Till so today, they are still talking whether there is a God or there is no God. Does it really exist or it doesn't? Okay. So, but you have a strong conviction that the, a God does exist. It's also possible that you have a belief that ah, a man should not hit his wife. Okay. There is no evidence in any way to prove or to prove it right or wrong, but it's just a strong belief. Like you, you shouldn't hit your wife. Do you understand? Now, if you share a kind of belief different from what your spouse has, of course you're gonna be breaking your marriage if it is not properly handled. But where both of you are able to work together, do you understand? you kind of have this, you, you agree and align with those values and beliefs, definitely your marriage will work. Now, for some people, it's, it's, it's a problem because they want to force their values and beliefs on their spouse. And that is a major no-no. You cannot be forcing your values and beliefs on your spouse. Mm -mm. You can't do that. And another thing is, you have to even be practicing what you are preaching. Some people will say, oh, I don't want you to lie to me. I hate lies. But they are the ones that will lie to you first. There's some people that I, I like people that are honest, but they are the ones that are the dishonest ones. So you cannot be in a marriage where you want values and beliefs to stand strongly 
for you in your marriage, but you are doing the otherwise, definitely you are up for a break because the other person who is happens to be your spouse, if they are continually trying to abide to those values and beliefs that you hold strongly, and they let her find out that you are not standing by it, of course, it's going to create a problem. It's going to create issues. And of course, before you know it, your spouse may just give up in wanting to, you know, listen to you or wanting to work with you in making sure these values and beliefs are imbibed into your marriage. So we need to be very, very careful. Okay. These are ways in which values and beliefs can actually make or break our marriage. What is important is that you and your spouse, you have a shared values and beliefs. You see, when we're both, we're all getting married, a lot of us never really even I don't I don't I don't know if um, myself and my husband actually had that in depth conversation. But I know there are certain things we we we, we noted down to say that these are the things we would want in our marriage. This is how we are going to be, you know, doing things in our marriage. Okay, it may not be in full detail. All right. But we had an idea of what we're going into. We knew what we wanted and we were working by it till date. Okay. But lots of us did not have this conversation. We just started it when we have gotten married. And some of them are giving issues. And a situation where you have not really had a proper conversation with your spouse and these values and beliefs already bringing issues in your marriage, you need to take a break. Because, madam or ga, you did not have this conversation at first. It's your mistake. However, nothing stops you, okay, from trying to introduce it into your marriage. However, it's not what you do by force. And it's not what you are going to be saying one thing and then you are doing another thing. So you need to ensure that at some point you actually have that conversation with your spouse about the values and beliefs you want to imbibe in your home. It, it makes it a lot easy when you both have the same values and beliefs. You agree on the same thing. Like, for example, you go to the same kind of church or this, you have the same religious belief. It works well. How about a marriage where you don't share the same religious belief? How do you deal with that? In those kind of situations, of course, you'll be expecting that there's a level of alignment. For example, if you are you're a Christian and you are married to um, somebody who, maybe a Christian, maybe your wife is a, um, a Catholic and you're a Pentecostal, do you understand? You want to find a way where you can have an alignment so that at the end of the day, you both don't have a clash. Because it's possible there are some people that are married, the wife will say, no, I want to still stay in my Catholic church. I don't want to go, up, go to Pentecostal. You understand that kind of thing? It becomes a problem in the marriage. But if, you're, if, if you both share the same kind of beliefs where, okay, the wife says, okay, fine, I will join because since we are married, we will then go to the same church. We will attend Pentecostal. Of course, it helps your marriage stay together it makes your marriage work but where you both want to have different views this one wants to go to catholic or this one wants to go to um, Anglican, and the other one wants to go to Pentecostal, and you both are not aligning and agreeing together you're gonna have issues okay and i think i already spoke in details how you can connect it you can look at my last video when it comes to connecting your values and beliefs with your spouse for a lasting marriage. I, I gave steps on how you can actually deal with your spouse in that area. So I'm not going to be talking about it. But bottom line, one of the things you need to understand is when you and your spouse don't have shared values, you don't have shared beliefs, you are not aligning together, you will have issues in your marriage. And that can probably break your marriage. But where you both have shared values, you agree you sit, you talk, and you say, okay, this is what we want to do for our marriage. Of course, definitely, it's going to help your marriage stay together. So I usually advise couples, it's good that you and your husband or your wife sit down and have an aligned 
or shared values and beliefs because it can actually make or break your marriage. Another point I want to raise is what kind of values and beliefs do you actually have? Because we're all coming from different backgrounds. A lot of things have a, will affect our um, you know, ways of reasoning, if you understand what I mean, or our attitude, or you know, our lifestyle, maybe the society generally, friends, parent, culture, whatever. All of these things can actually affect the way we reason as individuals. But bringing it down into our marriage, what should really work? What kind of values and beliefs should really work? Which marriage breaks are for married persons? However, we're also here to preach the word to say that we are Christians. We are sons and daughters of Christ. So therefore, your marriage should be godly. And if your marriage is godly, you are also supposed to have values and beliefs that are godly in your marriage. So what I'm trying to point out here as a point two is that you are supposed to have godly values in your marriage because that will make your marriage work. But when you have ungodly values, let me give you an instant. You come from a broken home and you come from an environment where there's, that is hostile. You know, your parents, they probably fought in your presence. They actually, they, they, they quarrel a lot and all of that. You bring it into your marriage. Those are ungodly values. But you just feel Every time your husband or your wife does something to you, you must have a reason to get violent. You must want to fight. You want to, you know, you want to break things. You want to, you want to shout. You want to scream at the top of your voice. All those things are not godly values. So get my point. If you are bringing in ungodly values and beliefs into your marriage, you definitely are out to break your marriage because no want to tolerate somebody that is going to be giving them problems in their life of course the world is already already stressful enough so now imagine where you are living with somebody who is now adding to the problem of course nobody wants that so you need to be bringing in values and beliefs that are godly and if we're talking about this kind of godly values i must tell you sincerely is a lot is a lot but I also tell people, the Bible is your manual. The Bible is your manual. For If you take time to study the word, okay, you will find out that there are certain principles of life that the Bible tells you that can be a guide to you in your everyday life. And it works 100%. These are principles and laws that back nature, 100%. So if you have this working for you, you would know that the, a God exists. God, God is so knowledgeable. Like everything in the Bible, whatever has been put in there to be the words of God or wisdom for us to apply in our marriage or in our life as individuals, they work you just need to, you know, have time to study the Word. Do you understand? You just need to have time to study the Bible. You need to have time to read and understand. For me, I like to go simple, go with good news. It's straightforward. But my point is, there are a lot of values and beliefs you can get from the Word to help your marriage. It's not just saying, oh, this is how my parents, they lived their life. My dear the Bible says you leave and cleave. You've left your parents. You married somebody. You are both starting your own unit. You're starting your own life. Now, this is going to be a blend of two different families again. Your mother cannot be like your wife. Your father cannot be like your husband. You are two different individuals. So in other words, at that time you're coming together, you are forming a new bond. 
you are becoming one. That is even the number one value when it comes to marriage. If both of you understand the fact that when we both came together to say, I do, we are now one. We are not against each other. We are for each other. You would see that there are ways that things can go in your marriage. Even in difficult times, you both have it at the back of your mind that we are together in this for better or for worse. But a situation where you don't have these strong values in your marriage, of course, you're going to be having issues. I want you to know that there are other values in the Bible that can actually also. Let me let me let me let me bring um this part. I have to so let's go to let's go to um Luke Luke 6 um 31. Which says you do unto others the way you want them to do to you. Your spouse is your friend. Your spouse is your neighbor. Your spouse is your brother or your sister. Everything total package put in between. The way you would like to be treated, that is how you should treat your spouse. That's another strong value. In fact, it is an embodiment of wisdom in that verse. If you look at um, Luke 6.31, yes. It's an embodiment of wisdom. If you want honesty from your spouse, you need to be honest yourself. If you want your spouse to be loyal to you, you need to be loyal yourself. If you want commitment from your spouse, you need to be committed. If you want respect from your spouse, you also need to be respectful. Do unto others what you want them to do for you. That's that. If you follow this principle, okay, no matter how bad somebody treats you, or even your spouse, whichever way they treat you, trust me, when you follow this principle and you follow it diligently and consistently, you will see it's only a matter of time. Your spouse will start changing for good. Your spouse will start adjusting so that you both can align and work together. But if you don't have this Bible, the word, you don't have God in you working with you, working in you, working through you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You will probably have your marriage crashed. Because when God is not in you, of course, what comes out of you is also going to be ungodly. And that is where you see where anger comes to play. That is where you come, that is where you see, you know, hatred and all of that come to play. All the negativity comes into your marriage because you and your spouse, you don't align. And you are bringing in values and beliefs that are ungodly. You need to push aside whatever your parents did in their marriage. Of course, no doubt, our parents, some of um, some of them, you know, have very good values that worked for them, okay? But I must tell you the truth. Those values, as good as they are, you may bring it to your marriage. Your spouse may feel differently about them. And that's where conflict come in. So we need to be very, very careful what we pick as values and beliefs. As I'm, I, I keep telling people, as long as the values and beliefs are godly, believe me, there's nobody where you go put sweet for your mouth where nobody take and collect. Do you understand? When nobody take and put for mouth, chop and lick mouth, that's how the word of God is. Is that powerful? If you are able to apply it as a fundamental or foundation in your home applying the values and beliefs as the word is in the bible it will work for you regardless of whatever your parents have done in their marriage they are example they are models i agree but trust me it's not everything that your parents or have applied in their marriage can work for your own marriage do you understand because they are two individuals who came together, agreed on how they want their marriage to be. Based on their personalities, they worked well together. But you, you have now gone to marry someone 
their child, you have gone married, mar you see someone you love and you are married to that person, that person is coming from a different background that is not the same as your parents. So of course you cannot expect that everything will work. But if you go by the word of God, you go by the manual itself, you look out for the truth, you look out for those values and beliefs you would like to imbibe in your home. If you work by it diligently, there is no way you will not make your marriage work. But a situation where you choose to want to go, oh, it's by force, by fire. Whether um, your fa For example, imagine in, in your parents' home where maybe, if, let, let me give an instance, or father, maybe for some reason, may not be giving your mom money, right? He probably just feels, oh, she's working, she's fine on her own. She will do very well for herself. I don't need to be giving her much more money. If I want to give her money, I'll give her money for the kids. As for, for her, I don't need to give her money because she's working, she's earning her money, and I don't touch her money. There are some families like that. There are some, there are some children that can confirm that I never saw my father give my mother money for her own upkeep. But if it's for children, he's ready to release money. He will say, okay, buy buy clothes for them, buy this for them. But for the wife, he will not. Why? Because he feels she's doing okay. She's earning her money and I don't touch it. Now, Oga, you will not marry a woman that even though she's working, she may have a different definition of love. The love that says, you must give me. That is how I know you love me. You will now come to say, I will not apply that principle or that value of taking care of you as my wife. I will not be giving you money because my father did not give my wife, uh, his wife money. Didn't give my mother money. So I don't need to give you money. It's wrong because you will start breaking your marriage. So there are values and beliefs you need to apply. There are some you don't need to apply regardless of whoever is practicing them and is working for them. Our parents, for instance, whatever works for them may not work for you in your marriage. So if you're marrying a woman now that needs you to show her the love, you need to show her the love, the way she understands the love. You need to show your man the love, the way he will appreciate the love. You cannot be using your parents' own to use to measure your own. Do you understand? That's what we are talking about. Going by the values and beliefs that are godly. Those one is standard. For example, if you go to um, Proverbs 22, 6, it talks about training your child in the ways of God. It is standard. It is not training your child in the ways of men. No. Those are standard values and beliefs. If you train your child in the ways of God, of course you see your child grow to love God, grow to want to work for God, grow to do great things in the name of God, which at the end of the day, you can never go wrong with it. Do you understand? All these things are biblical values and beliefs. Once one takes time to, to read all of these things in the, in the Bible, you will, you will pick a lot. You will learn. You will learn. At the end of the day, love is paramount in all of it. Whatever values and beliefs you want to introduce into your marriage, let you let you just has let you just have everything to do with love. Do you understand? Once you sit with your spouse, you talk with your spouse about it, and your spouse has, you know, a reservation that is not in support of that values and belief. Don't fight it. Give it time. It's a gradual process. Everybody's coming from somewhere. Even though it's godly, your spouse may still not understand it because of where they are coming from. For example, when you have a woman who is, I will use women because it's typical with them. If you're married to a wife who is someone that just believes oh, almost an eye for an eye, you do me, I will do you back. And maybe as a husband, you just feel like, come on, babes. I mean, it was a mistake. Maybe you did something wrong to her. She got off and said, hey, you have done it. Well, I will still do my own back. You know, there are people like that. They don't give, they don't give, they don't have mercy. They don't forgive easily. They don't forget easily. You may be married to somebody like that. And no matter how much you are preaching to the person that, look, Let's build a value and be, where we forgive each other, where we are able to, you know, try to 
to see that nobody's above mistake. We will make mistake. I can offend you in a way that you will not like, but it does not mean that I hate you. It's just because at that moment, situations or things happened, and that's why I reacted the way I did. But you will find that the other person would not want to listen. They will tell you, no, you have done me, I will do you back. And I for an eye, God no go vex. <laughs> You know that kind of a thing. But at the end of the day, you can't say because of they refuse to understand the values and beliefs that are godly you want to bring into your marriage, you will not be very resentful. You will not be unloving to them. You will not want to treat them right. Of course, that would be totally wrong because you will be breaking your marriage. So even if those values and beliefs are godly, Give it time. Give it time. Be patient. Continue to talk to them. One day, they would listen. Sometimes they say, experience is the best teacher. It's only a matter of time. They will also learn and align. So just have it in mind. When your values and beliefs are not godly, it has every reason to break your marriage. But if they are godly, it will make your marriage. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible has so many of so many, so many verses, areas that back your values and beliefs you can take in and bring into your marriage. But like I said, most important of all, everything you do regarding your values and beliefs in your marriage must be centered on love. When you have love at the back of your mind, you will not have a reason to want to hurt another. You won't have a reason to want to fight your spouse. You won't have a reason to want to lie to them. You won't have a reason to want to be honest to them. You won't have a reason to want to cheat on them, to be disloyal. All of this negativity will not come to play. Once love is paramount, all these things are strong. Excuse me. All these things are strong values for your marriage. Even when it comes to communication, if you love your spouse, you'll be open to them. You will not be secretive. All these things are values that are godly. Okay? So you just need to have it at the back of your mind. Once it's a godly value, it will make your marriage. But if it's ungodly, it will break it. So lastly, I want to talk about aligning your values and beliefs to your family vision. The truth is that a lot of us don't have family vision. We don't. Even though we do, it's not been spoken yet. Like your spouse may not even know this is your vision. You just know that as things go, as time goes by, you just know, oh, I don't want you to um to do this, um, to 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 do this, to act this way. Do you understand? For example, you may just maybe for one day your wife just does something wrong or your husband does something wrong and you just tell them, oh, never do that again. Do you understand? At that point, that is when you are now introducing your values and beliefs because you just feel it was necessary at that point to say it out. Do you understand? Same with vision or mission. A lot of us have the vision in our mind to say, ah, I just want a peaceful home. Like the moment I'm just coming home, my spouse is, you know, there to hug me, welcome me. You know, the kids are there to, you know, all those kind of feels and, you know, I would say expectations. We have some people who have it in their hearts, but they've never really had a conversation with their spouse to talk about this vision. Now, you now find out that when they start introducing values and beliefs to align to those visions, for example, you may say, I want me and my spouse to, to, to have a kind of a strong bond, like a companionship. Let's be very close. Let's be body body. Let's be friends. Let's be best of friends. You understand? Let's, let's not do without each other. We should always communicate and love each other. Every point in time we are talking and, you know, checking up on each other. You want to share that kind of intimate relationship with your spouse. But guess what? Your spouse has a different vision. Oma for himself. Be doing your own, I'll be doing my own. Do you understand? Now, because you have held on to that vision to yourself, your spouse doesn't know what you're thinking. 
but you're already introducing values and beliefs for example you say oh baby let's go out on a date and your spouse will be giving you oh as in not today and i'm not i don't i don't i have things i want to do do you understand you can go on your own hang out with your friends now don't worry i'll be fine just do what you want to do just free me do you understand you are not now aligning he has a vision to want to bring a, a family bond do you understand where both of you are intimately close but you feel the vision can be that of everybody on their own do their thing and be happy this is why some marriages have issues they break because of their values and beliefs are not aligning to the family vision and that's why we should always have that conversation sometimes unspoken a couple may understand the vision because they come from a kind of almost the same kind of background for example a christian home where a husband and wife they come from very strong christian background there's that there's that um i'll call it there's a common understanding of love you know love exists i can't do anything without carry my spouse along we must always work together we must do things together before i make a a move i must let my spouse know there are couples without spoken words about family vision they already align now that is easy that is straightforward that's fantastic it's lovely is is the best however it can be misunderstood that is why it's good for a husband and wife to always find time to talk about all of these things when it comes to family vision i have my past videos i've i've talked about how you can actually you know you and your spouse can sit and have a family vision what you want your family to be known for what's what's that you want to you want to be seen as do you get some people just like we just want to be a godly happy family now, when you talk about a godly, happy family, what does that entail? It means your wife, your children, you yourself, whatever you do, it has to be godly. You pray together, you go to church together, you do all the right things together. Do you understand? And you are all happy. You support each other. It may be your family vision. There are some people that actually have that as a family vision. Some people have it in them to say, our family vision is to stand by each other. You know, what? You know, it's typical with some Igbo families, right? If you enter that family, you go, no say you don't enter family. Because one, if you fight one person, the entire family will fight you back. Do you understand? Those are visions. It is something a father, mother sits and talk about and then enforce it. That's what guides your decision making at home your children if they are doing things that don't align to that vision you correct them and that is a problem with some people when it comes to parenting you cannot be saying this is our family vision for example a case of where you're saying a family vision that is godly and is happy you understand or loving or a family vision where you say we all have to always stand by each other try to do things together as much as possible like you can decide to say you want to do getaways together we must eat dinner together at least once in or twice in a month if we are busy with our lives and all of that kind of stuff if you agree that those are your values you must transfer it to your children now it is so wrong in a situation where a husband or a wife is trying to correct their kids that is the problem some people have when it comes to parenting your your you and your husband or your wife you have agreed and said oh we are going to have a vision where we eat together as a family in fact once daddy or mommy comes home we come together we eat as a family or we pray together then one of your child will now decide it is the time that they want to play a video game and rather than rather for you to support your wife when they are scolding the child you now be saying leave or yeah, leave him just leave him for today leave him for today tomorrow no leave her leave her for today don't worry she will join in tomorrow and before you know you are already deviating 
from the values and beliefs you have set. This is what makes, uh, you know, marriages break. There needs to be a level of consistency. If you have set your vision for what it is, you must follow through with it. Your values and your beliefs must connect to that vision. If you want to be a godly home, that love God and work for God, it means whatever your family is doing needs to be connected to it. For example, we must be going to church every Sunday. We must be praying together as a family. We must also be having some... Our children must be in one church, um, um, one church group or the other. Because that vision is to build a godly home. If you understand what I mean. That's how you have a family vision. It's like an overall statement of what you want your family to stand for. When they see your family, they know these people, this is what we know them for. There are families where it is one for one. What's, what, what's that? This is it. Um, all for one, one for all. All for one, one for all. That means it will be okay. Everybody must put hand together. We will protect ourselves. And that's why you cannot mess up with some families. If you enter the family and you say you want to mess up with any of their family members, it will see the whole squad on you. It's a vision. Do you understand? And because of that, they train the children. They, they, they try to guide them through to also align to that vision in everything that they do if one is not um happy and another person is just feeling and if one of the child is not happy and the other one is busy playing along and jumping around the parent need to call that one and say come the vision of this family is we stand by each other one for all all for one what are you doing your brother or your sister is not happy and you are busy playing on your own and you're happy and you are okay by yourself why the other person is not happy you need to go and do something about it that's how you incorporate your values and beliefs to align with the vision but the problem is some people or some couples don't do this and that's why you have a break in the marriage so i believe with these three points that i've still as i've pointed out it's 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 something you can have a reflection on because the truth is that a lot of families, husband and wife, have the values, the beliefs aligned, okay? Yeah, they do. However, they have the problem of transferring it to the children. And that's where parenting goes wrong. They are also, husbands and wife, they have the values and beliefs but it's not connected to a vision. Everybody's running their own race. This is where you see a, 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 a wife will say, oh, the kids go to bed by 9 o'clock. And the father is telling you, no, there's nothing wrong. Now let them still stay up by 10. They can go to bed later. Do you understand? Different values and belief. If a husband and wife can sit, come together and clearly state out their values and belief, it goes a long way to help the marriage last longer. All it takes is communication, which may be a major problem with some of us. To actually find that time to sit, talk with our spouse about our family, how do we want it to be? Where do we see our family in the next five or 10 years? What is the plan? It's a problem for some couples to actually have that conversation. And the truth be told, when it's only a matter of time as you move along in your marriage, 10 years, 5 years, 20, 30 years, whatever, you start seeing the repercussion telling in your marriage or your children. And before you know, the marriage falls apart. It's not shocking when you see people that, you know, 20, 30 years in their marriage, they're already talking of divorce. Because there are certain things that were unsaid that they were tolerating or they were thinking the other person should understand or know better. At the end of the day, it just didn't click. 
because communication didn't happen. Communication is the engine, engine of any relationship. It's the engine, it's the oil, it's everything when it comes to your marriage. If you don't have a good communication with your spouse, you feel we don't connect. When we talk, I'm talking up, you're talking down. If you don't have that in your marriage, there's a greater possibility of you having a crackdown in your marriage. Because you are saying one thing, your spouse will be saying something else. And if you both are approached by a third party, you will both be saying different things. Because there is no communication. Both of you are not aligned. You don't have shared values, you don't have shared beliefs. You see things differently. And that is why some people just come and say, oh, he does not understand me. Oh, she does not understand me. Oh, our marriage is a mistake. I believe strongly that each and every one of us have been destined by God to be with our spouse. Because there's something in us our spouse needs to make them better, to take them to the next level. But a lot of us don't realize this. We just feel it's just for ourselves like the love we want the the desires of our heart is what is important we don't see it to be what can i do for the next person who happens to be my spouse we are soldiers for christ we are to build a generation of godly children who will be weapons to the world we don't see it that way and because of that problems arise in rooms we don't see it that way but if we are able to understand that these values and belief will stand as bricks to help our home decision, to help us manage everything that concerns us. Imagine where a husband and wife have a strong value to say, okay, any decision that concerns me, for example, when it comes to, oh, we want you and your husband to be the chairman or, or the, to be the chairpersons for a wedding or for an event or for a group you they are speaking to you as a husband or as a wife and they are asking that your spouse must be with you in that event you don't have a right to make that decision for your spouse even though you are the head as they call it the men you don't have the right. You have to carry your spouse along. You have to communicate. You have to bring your spouse to know that this event, they've asked for us to come. And it's important. If it is very important to you, you can make them understand that. And you share the information with them. And get their buy-in. So that when you go, you are going as a team. But the problem with some of us is that we just feel like we should have the say for everybody in the home if you don't have a shared value that before decisions are being made we meet we need to come together we need to rub mind and agree and work with one voice you will see that it will be easy for a third party to come and scatter because when one person is saying one thing another person if they come and our children do it to us use our children for example i mean to be sincere to you these children they see us they understand when we play games with ourselves they know they understand these things they know so when they see that anytime mommy scolds me daddy comes to pet me and try to scold mommy back or put mommy off you will see that every time your wife scolds your child your child will run to you as a father to come and pay mommy and be reporting your wife to you your small child or your grown-up child will come and be reporting your wife to you is that child all right <laughs> as a father or mother you say are you coming to report your mother to me okay no problem i've heard it is not there and then you are now going to be calling your wife uh -huh. uh, sweetheart 
Why did you do this? Why did, in front of your child, you are you are not going to be castigating or you know attacking your wife. That no, 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 take it easy. It's not that it's not like that. You shouldn't be doing that. No, you know what you're doing? You are giving that child the power to come between the both of you. Yes, that's what you are doing. And tomorrow that child is going to keep coming back to you to be reporting mommy to you or reporting daddy to you because they know you will take their side. You will protect them. Do you understand? These are values we need to sit as couples to agree that, look, when it comes to parenting, hmm, if I tell baby boy, this is wrong. Hmm? Daddy, if they come to tell you, you say, what did mommy say? Mommy said this is wrong. You say, okay, since mommy has said it's wrong, it is wrong. You support her. They may be behind in the bedroom. You cannot be telling, you know, sweetheart, don't you think you're a little hard? Do you understand? You, 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 you talk to your wife if you feel differently about her approach. Or you talk to your husband if you feel differently about his approach in, in parenting the child. But don't go and do it in front of... A lot of us do it in front of the children. And that's why tomorrow our children will be using us to play ball. If it comes to chocolate, they will meet you, daddy chocolate. And you say, no, I would not give you chocolate. They will go and meet mommy. Mommy chocolate. Mommy will give them chocolate. They will not say, daddy said no chocolates. Do you understand? My kids did it for me one day. One day, be my husband. <laughs> It was so funny that day. When the sitting room, in fact, funny enough, my husband was on one side of the sitting room. I was on another side of the sitting room. I was even busy doing something. And then they've already had a small talk with my husband. Do you understand? About, you know, biscuits and chocolates and all that kind of stuff. And the man told them, guys, you are not having anything. Nothing is You are not going to have chocolate. Now, according to my rules, right? Or I would say rules that have been put on ground because you see the sugar thing about kids. I try to manage it. I may give them chocolates and biscuits today. The next day, they may not have anything sweet. It will just be water, you know, juice that are not so sugary, all this kind of stuff. And then the third day, like that, I try as much as possible to manage the sugar they take in. So, according to our calendar, hmm, the children have actually not had chocolate and biscuit that particular day do you understand like they didn't have it the day before yeah i think so and that day they're supposed to have it do you understand what i'm saying so that particular day we were both at two different sides of the sitting room and these children that they finished talking to their dad that they want to have their biscuit and you know they've they've, they've already flexed muscle with the guy and he told them that you are not having it you're not going to have it do you know because these children, they know that, ah, we didn't have our chocolate and biscuit yesterday. So we're supposed to have it today. Do you understand? After they finished with that, they came to come and meet me. Mommy, we want to have our chocolate and biscuits. And I almost, I think I even already said yes or so, unknowingly. And then the next thing, I, my eyes caught my husband in the city room. And he said, and he just did like this. Immediately, I reversed. I said, guys, you cannot have it. And that was it. They were like, uh -uh, but we didn't have our chocolate and biscuit yesterday. This one, that one, that one, that one. I said, you cannot have it. You can't have it. Do you understand? So me and Oga, we aligned on the same, you know, we, 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 we were aligned as the same team. Do you understand? We said, you can't, you can't have it. And that was when they came back and they were saying, oh, maybe daddy has told you that you shouldn't give it. I said, ah, well, if you have said it, it will not happen. It will not happen. So whether you, you had it yesterday, you did not have it yesterday, you will not have it today. Case closed. That's how your values and beliefs should work. You both stand as tag team. You talk about it, you agree and say this is the way forward for our marriage. And Believe me, by the grace of God, you can have things bouncing into your marriage anyhow, and both of you will not be able to manage it. You will manage it because it makes decision making easy, it makes communication easy, it makes everything about running your home easier. Once you two align, alignment is key. It's key. You see that oneness 
the Bible talks about two becoming one. That is what it is to align for both of you to understand yourself and the truth be told, it's all going to happen when love exists. And what is really love? We, we know what First Corinthians 13 talk about love. I don't want to go into details. Love is an action word. It's not a feeling. Let's 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 take it out of our mental. What will I call it now? Let's take it out from our 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 mindset that it has to be a feeling. Forget all these things we watch in Z World. Forget all these things we watch in movies. All that kind of stuff. That's different. That's like passion. Do you understand? But you see, love in its real sense is what First Corinthians thirteen talks about. Go and read it. Go and read. Go and read First Corinthians. I like to read full chapter in everything, so I understand where the message is coming from. Read that full chapter and read, understand what love really means, and then you know it has a lot to do with your doing, being kind, not being selfish, not always thinking of your your own yourself, but you're thinking of others. You're not quick to anger. All of these things. Are action words they are, they are doing words do you understand so once you have that love in your marriage it goes a long way to help your relationship and makes it last longer twale rockstars twale i want to thank you all for and many of you that showed up in today's video god bless you god bless your marriage edith endlessly my dear darling husband thank you so much for your support be my G for life, you know. I love you, you know. I love you for life. Be my G. Um, okay, Chilinda, thank you for joining. Um, Anna Liel Ike, thank you for coming. It's so good to see you. And of course, um, yes, and a whole lot my husband has also pointed out in the conversation. Thank you so, so very, very much exactly in fact this one alignment is very important in marriage which is agreement exactly agreement can two work together unless they agree you see when you read the bible okay you get insights to laws and principles of life that you can't go wrong you can never go wrong. The thing that is doing all of us is that we are just selfish. We are always thinking about ourselves. That's why we don't pay attention to another person's feelings or what is going on around us. Two cannot work together unless they agree. The same thing in marriage. The two of you cannot work together unless you agree. Unless you agree, it is key. It is very, very key. Twale Rockstars, Twale, I want to appreciate each and every one of you for joining me um, for today's video. And I also want to beg you, please, that feel free to share your post in the group as long as it's marriage related. Feel free to join conversations, regardless of your busy schedules, okay? You can still share your views, share your thoughts. Tell us things that we also want to learn from you about marriage. And we are also praying that God is going to see us through in all of our endeavors in marriage breaks because there are plans that we are putting in place. But I know at the end of the day, it's only by the grace of God that those plans are going to come to fulfillment. And I know that marriage breaks is not just me is all of us who are married that's why it's called marriage breaks it's all of us who are married and if we can all put heads together to say let's move this group let's talk real marriage related issues let's talk issues come up with solution help a home it's a support group it's a workshop i'm just preparing things down i know that times are going to come we'll start doing activities if it is your mind to make your marriage work you will do those activities you will do the activities if it's 
we will pick a day where we say today's activity is this this is what you're going to do for your husband or for your wife or for your kids so that we are working it out marriage is work when you see people happy in their marriage it's not an overnight thing it's work and god is going to give us the grace to fulfill all of our responsibilities in our marriage in the mighty name of jesus i want to thank you all for all of your support please continue to support us and of course we have our other social media platforms youtube tiktok instagram please and please you see facebook basically is for us to be open enough to talk about sensitive matters that is why it is private it's not even private again it is a secret group officially a secret in the court <laughs> it's a secret group so nobody can come to this group unless you invite them so if we're going to be a small number of people as long as that small number of people we understand that we are here to deliberate on issues in marriage to know the way forward and help other marriages it's fine the objective has been met Whatever we are doing for YouTube, IG, TikTok, is just picking selected items from here and take them there for people to also just enjoy and learn. But it does not affect what we do in the breaks here. It doesn't. So please, I want us to have that understanding and feel free to share our support for this group. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless your marriage endlessly. I remain Kilichi Uzodima Vitalis Onyensi, a certified marriage and relationship counselor. And I'm also free for you um, counseling. If you want, you can share um, um, whatever it is you want us to talk about via email, marriagebridge17.gmail.com. Or you can also private chat me. And you can also call, but of course, that's where you first private chat me. Cha cha. Yes, 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 yes. Swale Rockstars. Swale. I'll be signing off now. Thank you so much for your time. God's blessings.